Hey folks, in this episode I'll show you the new Blender 4.2 extension system for add-ons. It's been a topic of controversy in the Blender community, but after the initial setup it's actually an improvement due to the options for saving your add-on configurations. I'll show you my top two add-ons to download and install, and give you a brief demonstration of each. So let's dive straight into it. So we'll open up Blender, we'll go to Edit, Preferences, and we'll go to Get Extensions. Before you do that, you might want to go to Systems and click Allow Online Access, and that will give Blender the ability to access the internet and if you don't want to allow online access you've got the option to click get extensions you click this arrow here and you navigate to visit extensions platform and what that will do it will open up this website here and all you have to do is you select the extension that you want so HDR rotation you scroll down until it says get add-on you click that button and you can literally just drag and drop that into your blender file I'm not going to do it that way so I'll show you the other way We've enabled online access. The reason I do it this way is because with your add-ons installed, it gives you the option to update the add-ons if there's any updates for them. So I'll navigate to Get Extensions and under Repositories, I'm going to select the extensions.blender.org and I'm going to type in Loop for Loop Tools. I'll then click Install and that'll install Loop Tools. And if I go to my add-ons and type in Loop, you can see Loop Tools has been installed and enabled. The next add-on is actually already in Blender by default, but I'll go to Add-ons and I'm going to type in Node for Node Wrangler. And then if this box isn't checked, you just check this box here. And if you want to save your repositories, you click this button here, click this plus button here. I can click Add Repository and I'll just call this one Custom 123 and I'll click Create. And now that would have saved all my downloads and my configurations for my add-ons into this custom repository here. So now that I've got Loop Tools enabled and the Node Wrangler, we'll go to the bottom left until we see this icon. We're going to click this button and click Save Preferences. And that will ensure that these two add-ons will be enabled every time you load Blender. And I do recommend having these add-ons enabled by default because you'll use them all the time. And if you're watching any tutorials online, the chances are that they've got these enabled. So I'll click Save Preferences and I'll close the preferences window. So the first tool we're going to look at is going to be loop tools and I've got a few objects here in my scene which is going to demonstrate the loop tools functionality. So with this object selected, two cubes each with a hole in, I'm going to tab into edit mode. I've got each of the edge loops selected and they've got an equal amount of vertices. So I'll right click, I'll select loop tools and bridge which will bridge the edge loops together. I'll tab out of edit mode, I'll then enable this object, I'll select this object, I'll then tab into edit mode and with these vertices selected I'll demonstrate the circle tool. So I'll right click, we'll go to loop tools and I'll click circle. And you've got all these options here where you can change the radius or flatten or change the influence. So that's the circle tool. Tab out of edit mode. I'll mute that. I'll then unmute this one and select it. I'll tab into edit mode. Now this is the curve tool. This is a really handy tool when you know how to use it. So I've got these three vertices selected. I'm going to right click. We go to loop tools and I'll click curve. And that will create a curve in the direction of the edges. And to demonstrate it one more time, maybe I'll select these vertices. I'll right click. I'll go to loop tools and I'll choose curve. So you can kind of see what it's doing here. Really handy tool. I'll tab out of edit mode. I'm going to mute that object. I'll unmute this object. So this is going to be our flatten tool. So I'll tab into edit mode. And with these vertices, selected as you can see they're all protruding out I'm gonna right click I'll go to loop tools and I'll click flatten and that's basically self-explanatory and with the option that appears down here we can change how much we want to flatten it by so that's that function I'll tab out of edit mode I hide that object I then unhide this object and this is G stretch so I'm gonna select this object tab into edit mode I'll right click go to loop tools and go to G stretch and what this will do it will stretch the middle vertice directly in the center of the two surrounding vertices and it doesn't matter if this is an active vertice or not so I'll give you another demonstration of that if I select this vertice shift select this one and shift select this one as the last vertice I then right click go to loop tools G stretch and as you can see regardless if it's the active vertice or not is going to stretch that vertice directly in the center of the two surrounding vertices. So I'll tab out of edit mode, I'll hide that object, I'll then unhide this object, I'll select this object, I'll tab into edit mode, I'll right click, go to loop tools and we'll go to loft and this will delete all the faces and the edges but it will keep all the vertices in place. To give you another example maybe I'll select these four vertices, I'll right click, I'll go to loop tools, loft, and it will remove that face. And I'll give you one more demonstration. So maybe if I select this vertice, I'm holding down control and shift and selecting this vertice to select all of those. I'll then right click, go to loop tools and click loft. 
and as you can see it's deleted all the faces all the edges but it's maintained all the vertices so i'll tab out of edit mode i'm going to hide that object i then unhide the next object and this is going to be the relax feature so if i tab into edit mode as you can see i've warped all these they're all completely flat but i've warped them in the x and z and then if i right click go to loop tools and click relax as you can see it's relaxed it a bit more we can change the iterations down here so maybe i want 10 iterations or possibly 25 iterations it just relaxes any edges it's also handy for if i've got this selected i'll just hit o for proportional editing i hit G, C, just bring this up here. As an example, I'll select this vertice, Control Shift select this one, I then right click, go to Loop Tools, and I'll click Relax. And it's gonna remember your last iterations. So I had it set to 25. If you want it set to one, you can. It basically just smooths things out. So I'll tap out of edit mode. I'm gonna mute that object. I'll then unmute this object. I'll select this object. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. And with these vertices selected, I'll right click, go into Loop Tools, click Space, and this will even out your vertices. So if I select this one, Control shift select this one, right click, go to loop tools and click space. Again, in the options down here, you can change the influence of that if you want to. So that's the loop tools in a nutshell. It's a really powerful tool. I recommend you having it activated by default. So next up is the node wrangler. So I'm gonna drag my cursor all the way to the bottom left until I see this crosshair. I'm then going to left mouse click and drag this up. I'm gonna change this to my shader editor. I'm gonna to go to viewport shading, clicking this button here, just so we can see what we're doing. And what the node wrangler does, it adds loads of features, whether it's in the geometry nodes editor or the shader editor. So the first function of the node wrangler would be shift A and that's to add a node. I'm gonna go for noise texture and with the noise texture selected, the second function would be control T and that'll add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. So with the texture coordinate and the mapping node, I can hit shift D and that'll create a duplicate. I don't want that, so I'm just going to hit delete. So the next function, I'm going to select the noise texture. I'm going to hit Control shift d and that will create a duplicate while maintaining the connection to the previous node. And when I had this selected and I hit Control t it added the mapping and texture coordinate. So with the principal BSDF selected, I can hit Control t and that will add an image texture, a mapping node and a texture coordinate. I'll just undo that, Control z And with the principal BSDF selected, I can hit Control shift and that will enable us to open up all the maps necessary for a PBR material. So I'll select all these maps. I'll click Principal Texture Setup. And as you can see, it's added everything we need for a PBR material. Maybe I'll just increase the strength of the bump. Let me just increase this window. So with these frames here, another function of the Node Wrangler. Box select all of these. I'm going to grab them over here. I'll then hit Control J and that will enable a frame. And if we hit F2, we can rename that frame. And the final feature of the node wrangler would be to create a group so i'll select this texture shift select this one shift select this and shift select this and then i'll hit Control g and that will create a node group and from here we can expose all our values and we can also rename the values and with this group output selected i'll hit n i'll then select group and we can rename these to anything relevant i hit n to close that panel and then i can also drag these values into the group input so we can have them in the same socket or we can have them in separate sockets. Again, if we select that node and hit N, we can rename these to anything that we like. I'll just hit N to close that panel and then hit tab to tab out of the node group. And we can also rename the node group to anything we like. So there's a couple more features I want to show you with the Node Wrangler, and this is just to help neaten up your node structures. So the first one, I hold down Shift, right click and drag, and that will add these noodle control points here. I just hit Control X to dissolve that noodle point. The second one will be hold down Control, right mouse button and drag, and that will disconnect your noodle. And if I zoom in down here, as you can see, I've got two noodles here coming out of this ambient oculation mask. So if I hold down shift and click my right mouse button and then drag, it's gonna join both of those noodles into one. I just hit Control X. And now I'm just gonna do a quick time lapse to show you how to use these to neaten up your node structures. Okay. So there's a basic example. So here's another example of a node tree I made using these control points. It just makes it a lot easier to read your node trees. I would get into the habit of using these. They're really helpful with these control points. So that's all for now, folks. Have a great day. Level up. And thanks for watching.